Hi, Dr. Karen Wilner here, and I'm excited to be with you today to talk about the jaw. The first thing I want to say about the jaw is we can hold a lot of anger in our jaw. So the jaw can be very tight. You can grind your teeth at night. It can feel like you have steel uh, bands in your, in your mouth. Uh, why we hold anger there? I don't know, but it's a place anger loves to go. So one exercise you can do, if you're a person that has tension, stress, negativity of any sort in your jaw, and you'll know that because it's tight or you grind your teeth, is you can begin to make small circles down this muscle, we call it the masseter muscle. Small, gentle circles, massaging your face, and maybe do that two or three times a day, just at the beginning. Eventually, you want to bring out the fierceness that you hold in your jaw. So that may mean you have to do something which is somewhat uncomfortable and may appear silly to you or weird, and that is growl. So by growling, you release a lot of the tension. So I'm going to give you a growl right now. See if you can do a growl back to me. Thank you, that's great. The next thing I want to talk about is the protruding lower jaw. So when the jaw juts forward, and it's not because of genetic or uh, physical reasons, it's because that person doesn't feel like they will be heard. They have to stick their neck out, so to speak, to be seen or heard. So that person tries to be forceful, maybe inside they're not feeling very forceful, but they intrude and protrude through the jaw. So if your jaw is like that, again, you want to stretch it, exercise it, bring it forward, bring it back, and begin to move your jaw and learn how to be more flexible with your jaw. Another issue is the disappearing jaw. Some people's jaw, lower jaw, moves back into their mouth so that their upper jaw protrudes. In that case, that person may be giving the message, I'm nice, I won't hurt you, you can be safe around me. Now, in reality, that person may hold anger and not even be aware of it, but they were taught, probably when they were very young, not to show their anger. So the jaw, lower jaw holds back. Those are the three things I wanted to share with you today. I'll add one final thought. The jaw, in structure mirrors the pelvis. So that's very interesting that we have the same structure here, if you look at a picture of the jaw, as in the pelvis. There is a connection. So if a person has sexual issues or other pelvic issues, we may see some semblance and resemblance of that in the jaw. And sometimes as a psychologist, we can even work with sexual issues by starting with the jaw. So I want to thank you for being with me today, and uh, I hope you work with your jaw and give it the exercise and flexibility that it needs. Have a great day.